and welcome. What I've created here is a post effects manager for Reaper. Let me explain. Reaper doesn't support post effects natively. That is, effects placed after the fader in the mixer. So if you wanted to do something like that, you'd have to manually create a send to another track and put the effects on that track. But then you end up with more tracks in the mixer and the track view. And you can hide them using the track manager. But it can also become a bit of a pain in the ass, to put it bluntly. And it can break up your workflow. So using Lua, I have created this post effects manager which automates the process and also allows you to work with post effects as if they are on the tracks themselves. To a degree, there are limitations and it's also very unfinished, but the basic functionality is there. Now, I don't really know Lua, I'm more of a C++ guy myself, but we can't wield specific languages. So I spent a couple of days learning it and uh, I knocked together the start of a basic GUI library and churned this out. It's early days. There's a lot more stuff I want to put into it, like group selection on the tracks, things like that. But I'll show you how it works. And I'll also show you some use cases of post effects for in a mix context, or even live, actually, now that I mention it. So then, you probably already know about post effects and how useful they can be. Especially if you're used to programs like Ableton Live and other doors that do support post effects. DJs, for example, often use post effects such as delay in a post configuration to do various effects in a live performance. It isn't always necessary to use post effects. There's ways to accomplish the same thing in just a regular effects chain. But this can be seen as kind of a wonky workflow for some especially when you want to use the faders on the mixer, as you would do on a physical mixing desk. There's also some other use cases, and we'll take a look at some of those later in the video. To start with, let's go through some of the basics. Let's start with an example of parallel delay with a post fader send. So here, I've got a demo track. It isn't finished. And to be fair, it's probably not the kind of track where you'd want to utilise this technique exactly in this way, depending on which way you'd want to take it, but it'll serve its purpose for the demonstration. I've already had a delay to the track in a pre-fader configuration. Enable it. Turning down the track turns both the dry and the wet signal down simultaneously. But how about independently? We can change those things in the plugin easy enough. But that's no good to us if we want to do it on the fader. So let's set up a send put the delay in a parallel post fader configuration. This is going to create a similar effect to what we can do with a straight post delay. As you can see, the output dry is completely off. And if we turn the fader down, the delay trail will continue on the parallel track. Guitarists often use a volume pedal before the delay for similar effect. If we do it manually, or we manipulate the fader with automation. We can use the delay to create various effects, such as swells and breakdowns, where the delayed signal keeps the rhythm of the track, even when the signal of the track itself is turned down. For this technique, and especially a single track like this, it's quite easy to set up a send, and probably desirable, since it's in parallel. However, when we're creating music in the box, we may want to emulate analog equipment using various plugins, some of which may not have any controls. Or, if they do, you may wish to set and forget those controls, such as in the case of this plugin by Air Windows. I'm going to use a test tone to demonstrate this. Here's the test tone without the plugin enabled. Just a pure sine wave at a frequency of 440 Hz, technically speaking. Now let's enable Console 6 channel, and you can see it generates a harmonic sequence of odd order harmonics. In other words, distortion. And the hotter we run the signal, the more aggressive the harmonics become. And thus the signal becomes more distorted.
So assuming that we're going for the analog workflow, we will be aiming to use such plugins across all of the channels in the mix to emulate the circuitry of an analog mixing desk. And we may be using this on projects where we didn't have the foresight to be able to set the project up in order to accommodate this. For example, using templates or presets. Sure, we could use a bus and send lots of tracks to the same track and apply the effect there. But in many cases, such plugins as these come with companion channel and bus effects to be applied in context to the track type respectively. Such plugins aim to emulate analog summing. In other words, many subtle channel variations all summing together to create a cumulative effect rather than lots of unaffected, digitally clean channels summing into a master bus which harnesses a plugin that forces a big change upon the signal or signals as a collective. And setting up a lot of tracks and sends manually can eat into its time, especially over many projects and also clutter up the project itself. So this is where the idea of the post effects manager comes in to make life a little easier. Before we dive in within a mix context, let's go over the basic operations of how the post effects manager plugin works so that we're all on the same page. Since there are no post effects within Reaper, the post effects manager creates the illusion of post effects. So, you can press the plus button to create an associated post effects track. So, let's create one for track one. As you can see, a track was created and instantly hidden, but you can get that back if you go into the track manager. Eventually, I'll place buttons within this graphical user interface so that you can show and hide all of the post effects tracks at the push of a single button. Once you press the E button, you are then editing the effects upon the associated post effects track. So we can think of the post effects track as an extension of the original track. One thing to note is that the active bus is where the post effects track is rooted. As we can see, this track is being sent to its associated post effects track. And its associated post effects track is being sent to the master bus. But we can change that. So, if I remove its associated post effects track, and then we press the B button on the bus track, active bus becomes the bus. And then when we create the post effects track, this post effects track now is being sent to the bus. And we can see that by clicking on this, and you can see, look, a receive from track three. Now, say that we had more tracks. We could send them all to the bus. And then, say this was a drum kit, they would all be going through the bus and we could affect them all together. But before it reaches the bus, we could be putting some console emulation across these tracks so that the faders act accordingly and allow us to push more signal through to soft click the signals. Doing that by going through each one and editing it is one way, an inefficient way, but it is a way. However, a better way, if we plan to be using the same effect across several tracks, we can actually add it in to just one of the tracks. Now with console 6 channel on the track, we can then press this C button, copy effect from track 1, and then when we create all these post effects tracks, we then have the same effect across all of them. We can clear that copy effects track by pressing the CC button above them all. So now, if we have another track and we create post effects track for that, I'm going to edit, it has no effect. Likewise, we can clear the active bus by pressing CB and it's back to the master again. It's not pretty, but it works. So that's the basic operation. Next, let's look at it in a mixed context for which it was intended. So rather than trying to tackle a full mix, here 
I've got six drum tracks. Now I'm just going to have a little play around for the sake of demonstration and test out a few different effects. I'm going to stick with console 6 from Air Windows because it's a free plugin. But feel free to use your favourite analog channel strip style plugin. This isn't a serious endeavour. It's more to demonstrate the fast application of the Post Effects Manager when dealing with multiple tracks. So we have six channels. We have a kick channel, snare channel, toms, cymbals, ambient, and a parallel compression track. Then I usually have buses in yellow, which are grouped in with the submaster track. Here I have a prototype of my own distortion effect. It's actually a guitar stomp box effect. But I like to use it to fatten up various other sources. But it does have a couple of phasing issues right now when mixed in with parallel sources due to oversampling and not accounting for the latency. But it's not going to cause a problem. In fact, it adds a bit of character. And then on this track, you can see here console 6 has a channel and bus version. So on the bus, I'm just adding in the bus version. And then I'll add the channel version using the post effects manager to the post effects tracks. Then they have an EQ and a compressor but we'll look at them shortly. So the first thing to do in here is to set the active bus to the drum bus. Then add the first post effects channel and rather than going ahead and adding the others, as I said before, you edit the first, add the desired channel plugin and then you click copy. Then add the rest of them. We are going to get a bit of a volume boost. Now you can account for that in the channel plugin or I'm just doing it rough here like this. And now the roughly the same volume as they were before. But because of the console plugins, they sound a little bit fatter to my ears. Especially the kick. Then here we have Rocket. It's a nice compressor. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the snare because I'm going to boost with the EQ in the high end with a wide Q. Brings out the snare a little more and brightens everything up. Then we can have a play around with the compressor. And quite easily we can bring out the snap and gravel with the snare with the already set attack and release settings, which allow the transients to slip through. But of course, we are mixing the drums in isolation here, with no other instrumentation. So there's no point putting too much effort into it. There is something though. These sends. I might put a feature into the Post Effects Manager to allow you to change the level of the sends. But you can just so easily account for it in the actual channel plugins. And then, if you want to go back, you can just remove them all. Quick and easy. So in summary then. I don't know how useful it would be to other people, you'll have to let me know in the comments, as well as any other features that you think would be essential to add into it, bearing in mind that at any point the Reaper team could go ahead and implement post effects, which would render this entire plugin obsolete, but I think it achieves its goal, especially for my workflow. Quick and easy to use, just enables you to get on, and that's what's important. Routing audio can be a bit of a frustration sometimes. But this plugin was really only possible to make because of Reaper's flexibility. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I do plan to do more videos in the future covering different topics. But until then, thank you for watching. And if you like this content, feel free to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, that'll be all. Over and out.